Okay, welcome back to members of 121 Community Church in Grapevine, Texas. Our ongoing study in Thessalonians by Paul of AD 51. We're going to take a look at uh, chapter 3, verses 6 through 13. And we've got a good look at uh, spiritual follow-up and uh, the parousia. So let's begin by looking at the triad on the left. We're going to take a look at the verses 6 and 7. And uh, Paul goes on to say in his letter that uh, Timothy, having returned to us, brought good news and uh, testified concerning your faith and your love in the Thessalonica church. And he also conveyed that uh, you remember us in a favorable way from our ministry when we were there with you for three weeks. And so Paul goes on to say that he was encouraged because of the report. And uh, he said in spite of all the distress and all of the tribulation that the, the three of them suffered, that uh, they got great encouragement from this report from Timothy that the church is flourishing and it is uh, a true um, Christ-based powerful church. And so this, in a way... Uh, helps Paul and Silas and Timothy to cancel out that which they suffered during that ministry. And he goes on in verse 7 to say that uh, it's on account of this ongoing faith of the church that uh, they can have this victory over that which they suffered during their uh, persecution and eventual uh, eventually being expelled out of uh, Thessalonica altogether. If you look at uh, Paul's uh, persecution, I've got a little note here. If you take a look at uh, verse 7, go down to note D, and we've got the persecutions that were suffered during Paul's second missionary journey. In Philippi, they were beaten and jailed. In Thessalonica, they were persecuted and expelled. In Berea, they were persecuted and expelled. In Athens, Paul was mocked and scorned by the philosophers when he mentioned uh, resurrection. So when he finally arrived in Corinth, he was depressed in weakness and in trembling, he says. Uh, we've got in Acts 18. So we think of Paul and we think of this great missionary. We don't ever register that. Uh, what about the horrible mission trips? He was a... Uh, devastated in this, in this second missionary journey. He was a uh, horrible, horrible actions and persecutions and tribulation during the entire mission trip. And by the time he got to Corinth, he was uh, in a self-confession. He said that he was uh, terribly distressed and de depressed over the entire missionary journey. But he's been encouraged by this report coming back to him by means of Timothy concerning the Thessalonica church. Now he's got great reason to celebrate. And so now if we go on with blocks, uh, block 2, verses 8 and 9, Paul says to the church, uh, we authentically live if we stand firm in Christ's lordship. If we persevere in alignment with Christ, then we will authentically live as, uh, we should live as newborn believers. And uh, the Greek concept of a stako means to uh, remain uh, constant and persevere in the midst of trial. <clears throat> and uh, it is a uh, perseverance that is the fruit of hope. And according to Bruce, this has a very strong eschatological reference here. It is always tied in with the uh, coming parousia for Paul, says Bruce. And so we look at verse 9, and Paul goes on to say that uh, it's with uh, great thanksgiving that uh, they've been blessed with this report from Timothy. They have been uh, empowered by the Holy Spirit to really uh, lift up the Thessalonica church in prayer, in praise, and in thanksgiving because of the very favorable report. And then he says, uh, it's concerning your faithfulness, and on, and on account of this faithfulness, we have great joy we actually rejoice because of you and because of your perseverance. In fact, Paul says, uh, how could we ever repay such a debt that the Lord has so thoroughly and deeply blessed 
the Thessalonica congregation, how could we ever even repay such a fantastic blessing from our Lord? So Paul and Silas and Timothy are greatly encouraged <clears throat> after all this uh, persecution and suffering in the second missionary journey. They have a great report from uh, Timothy concerning Thessalonica. So if we look in verse 10, block 3, Paul goes on to say that uh, day and night they are interceding and praying for the Thessalonica congregation. We are even using the concept of a huper periso. We are a hyper-petitioning God. We are constantly petitioning God on your behalf. Because we want to see you face to face, we want a return trip in order to uh, complete our apostolic teaching, in order to uh, repair any damage to the apostolic teaching with regard to the faith of the Thessalonica church. So Paul and Silas and Timothy truly desire a second follow-up visit. And he uses a deomenoi, meaning uh, that they pray with insistence for um, katarizo, and katarizo means that they pray for the opportunity to do follow-up ministry in Thessalonica. Paul understood the importance of follow-up. You don't uh, lead believers into a new conversion experience and then abandon them, them, you do not do that. For Paul, this first triad is speaking to the mandatory and the necessary ministry of katarizo. There is a mandatory ministry of follow-up that needs to be taken on with anybody that uh, enters into evangelism or teaching. Follow-up is essential. Katarizo is essential for ministry in Paul's and Silas and Timothy are praying for a face-to-face follow-up ministry to Thessalonica so they can do katarizo, complete apostolic teaching and follow-up. Now we've already discussed the fact that this letter is extremely eschatological. It looks toward the second coming of Jesus Christ. And we're going to address that again in verses 11, 12, and 13. So let's move to the triad on the right and take a look at the, the closing verses. In verse 11, Paul says, uh, Additionally, let me say that uh, may God our Father and may the Lord Jesus Christ direct our path back to you. I pray that God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ will direct our way back to you, that the Holy Spirit will actually steer us successfully back to you and overcome the blockades we've had in the past. They've suffered interference from Diabolos. Paul prays for victory. He prays that they will actually have a, an opening up of an opportunity through the Holy Spirit to make their way back to Thessalonica. And Paul is a very persuasive here because he uses concepts like direct increase and abound, which uh, is uh, very much called operative language. He wants the Holy Spirit to direct their steps back to Thessalonica for face-to-face follow-up katarizo, follow-up ministry. To uh, eliminate, for the Holy Spirit to eliminate the uh, satanic hindrance or the satanic agakapto hindrance to that return that they've been suffering. Now for Paul... God the Father and Christ are linked together by a singular verb. And uh, that suggests that Paul views Jesus as sharing in the deity of Christ, the deity of God. And uh, the operative voice is used for a, something that's an attainable wish that's being prayed for. It's frequently used in the Septuagint. Uh, Paul prays for the Holy Spirit to make straight the way back to Thessalonica and to remove satanic obstacles. He prays, Lord, please make straight our path back to the Thessalonica congregation so we can do follow-up ministry and further apostolic teaching and also correct and remove satanic obstacles that are obstructing our way back for this ministry. 
So Paul very much uh, views all of this as an eschatological event, which has uh, the powers of Diabolos and the powers of the Holy Spirit in conflict with each other. And Paul prays that the Holy Spirit will gain the victory and they will find a way to have a face-to-face re-encounter with the Thessalonica church. Uh, verse 12, Paul says, May the Lord make you to increase abundantly in their, your love toward one another, in agape, self-give, self-giving toward one another. In other words, Paul prays, May you abound in Christian virtue. And for Paul, the uh, Thessalonians' desire to take the gospel to all of humanity is uh, evidence of their election, and that's very much different than the Jewish hierarchy that's very narrow-minded and uh, envious. And he says, uh, testimony and confirmation of their election-type call to salvation is the fact that they do desire to take the gospel to all of humanity. He prays that they might abound in love, that they might stand firm against all apostasy, and uh, they continued it, that they would continue to stand up against the persecution of the Jewish hierarchy in the synagogue and continue to share the gospel. That is Paul and Silas and Timothy's. That's their prayer. That's their intercession. And they hope and they pray for a chance to have the satanic obstacles removed and the chance to go back and do follow-up ministry for growth in the faith and further apostolic teaching. So if we look at verse 13, block 3, Paul says that their goal is to return so they can strengthen the hearts of the individuals in the Thessalonica church so they can align their hearts with Christ so they can become blameless in holiness, so they can be uh, hagiosune, holy before God the Father and before the Lord Jesus Christ, that they can actually attain to kayosune righteousness through further follow-up and further apostolic teaching and guidance. And again, eschatology is being, eschatology is being mentioned here because... Uh, Paul is always directing the reader toward the uh, returning parousia of Christ. He says that uh, holiness and sanctification are the intentionality of God the Father through Christ. And they want to do follow-up ministry so they can help to uh, lead the congregation toward that sanctification. And he says that Christ will return in the Father's glory with the angels and that he does embody the deity of the Father. Paul already sees the uh, unification of the Father and the Son as both being bound together in deity. He prays for the opportunity to do further apostolic follow-up teaching in order to work the congregation towards sanctification, toward the intentionality of God's Soteria, salvation through Jesus Christ, his son. And so we end up with a a look at the concept of blameless. And that uh, speaks to maintaining an exemplary life, which Paul hopes that they will continue to maintain an exemplary life in the gospel. And that does uh, recall the Exodus 19 prophetic word where God says, I will make of you a holy nation. Well, the new covenant is also a fulfillment of the uh, intentionality of God to make a holy new spiritual nation of newborn believers in his son. Paul takes this up. He seeks to uh, get involved in follow-up ministry. And it's all linked together in an eschatology of a soon to arrive parousia advent of the returning Jesus Christ from the Uranus heaven where he currently is exalted to the right hand of the Father in his lordship where he is Christos Messiah, Kyrios Lord and Krinos judge over the living and the dead. But he will return shortly, says Paul, in a parousia returning advent that will be a powerful returning advent and the overcoming of Thalepsis Tribulation. 
So we have just a few verses here. We've only got uh, 6 through 13, but powerful teaching on follow-up and the parousia. And that's going to wrap up uh, Lesson 6. We'll pick up next time uh, in Chapter 4, I believe we move on. I think 3.13 was the end of Chapter 3.